sing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me i once was lost but now am found was blind but now I see, now I see, now I see, t'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved, how Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing Regis Parish family gathers to celebrate the fourth Sunday in the season of Lent, also called Laetare Sunday. There are two announcements. Due to a delay in the release of the movie Father Stew, the March 25th showing of Father Stew had to be rescheduled for Saturday, April 22nd. Anyone who registered for the previous March movie will automatically be registered for the new date of the movie, April 22nd. To repeat, the Father Stew movie and dinner event has been moved to Saturday, April 22nd after the 5 p.m. mass. Look for more information in future bulletins. We apologize for the inconvenience. The St. Regis Music Ministry will present our mid-Lenten program of song, handbells, and scripture this Thursday, March 23rd at 7 p.m. Please plan to attend this Thursday at 7 p.m. 
for beautiful vocal music and handbell pieces with scripture excerpts from the Gospel of Matthew. That's this Thursday at 7 p.m. Please pick up the hymnal and turn to number 795. I want to walk as a child of the light. Number 795. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to see the brightness of In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we sang in our opening hymn, we come wanting to be children of the light. We come to walk in the light of the Lord, and during this Lenten season, we seek to grow in uh, living and walking in that light. As we prepare ourselves for this celebration, we do so mindful that we are always in need of God's grace as we seek his light. And so let us call to mind our sins and call on the mercy and love of our God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ. 
Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees appearance, but the Lord looks in the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are there any other sons you have? Jesse replied, there is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord then said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. shepherd there is nothing I shall want the Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I shall want the Lord is my shepherd Nothing can I want. He gives me rest in green pastures, leads me by quiet waters. He revives my spirit and guides me in right paths for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Though I walk through valleys of darkness, I fear no evil. You are always beside me with your club and staff to protect me. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely your goodness and 
mercy follow me all my life long and I will dwell in the house of the Lord now and forever the Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I shall want a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you're the light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness, rather expose them for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything opposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Praise and honor to you. Praise and honor to you. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you. Praise and honor to you. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And when he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on the man's eyes, and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said it is, but others said no, it just looks like him. But he said, I am. So they said to him, how were your eyes opened? He replied, 
The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, where is he? And he said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made the clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such things? There was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked him, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son, and we know that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor who opened his eyes. He asked him, He is of age, he can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged Jesus as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, he is of age, question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, if he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not have been able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that he had been thrown out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin, but now you are saying we see, and so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Not unlike the Samaritan woman in last week's gospel, the man born blind is also on a journey as the gospel unfolds and we hear all of the 
rich details of this rather lengthy story. And understandably, you know, we kind of focus in on him because he kind of stands out as the central character in the story. But there's actually another journey that's going on at the same time, and that of the Pharisees. As the man born blind is moving in one direction towards sight, the Pharisees are moving in the other direction. They are moving toward darkness. Not toward physical blindness, but toward something even worse. They're moving toward spiritual blindness. Our reading today from Paul's letter to the Ephesians tells us, tells the Ephesians and us, that we were once not in darkness, but we were darkness. But we have become light in the Lord. And so we are to walk as children of the light. That's the journey that the man born blind is on, who is not identified. He is a, an anonymous man, the man born blind. And I think that kind of helps us to put, and that's what we're supposed to do, you know, to be able to put ourselves in the shoes of these characters in the story. And there's a lot of detail in there that we, you know, some of the subtleties that we might miss. And the, the initial question the disciples asked Jesus is that this man or his parents who sinned that he was born blind. Um, because if somebody had, you know, was born blind or had some kind of you know, deformity or something like that, that was seen as a sign of being cursed by God because you did something wrong. So either this man or his parents sinned. Uh, and Jesus gets them out of that right away. And we have the miracle, which is almost overshadowed by the rest of the story, that takes place as Jesus uh, gives this man his sight, the man born blind. And from that time on, from that initial encounter with Jesus, he gains his physical sight, but he's also gaining something much more. He is gaining spiritual sight. Like that Samaritan woman in the gospel last week, he's going through a process. Starting out, you know, who did this? How can you now see? That man did it. Then that man gets a name, Jesus. And then as the story unfolds, as he is repeating his story, in essence, he's becoming a disciple and telling the story over and over again of what happened to him, of what his encounter with Jesus was like. He then eventually comes to see Jesus as a prophet and then by the end of the story as Lord. And he is truly a disciple. And he truly sees. In the meantime, the Pharisees are always trying to poke holes in his story. You know, they're questioning him and they're doubting him. They call in his parents. They call him in a second time. And through all of that in the story, they're becoming more and more resistant. This man is a sinner. He did this on a Sabbath and all the rest. They see this happen right before their eyes. And yet they choose to be in darkness. They choose blindness over sight. As we make the journey in Lent, we have to ask ourselves, you know, which way are we going on the journey? And, you know, and it seems like a stupid question because we all want to be going toward the light, and hopefully we are. But we do have to ask ourselves, we who have encountered Christ in baptism, we are already made light in the Lord by virtue of our baptism. But are we following the path of this man born blind? Are we growing in our sight? You know, through the grace of Lent and the practices of this season, they're meant to help us along to be able to see more clearly with the eyes of faith. To make that journey to come to greater awareness of who Jesus is. As we go about living our faith in the larger context of our lives, which direction are we moving? When we come here in the celebration of the Eucharist, whether it's in this wonderful gray season of Lent or whether it's a weekend in the middle of the summer when everybody else is out doing everything else, 
Do we see this as an obligation? Or as a graced moment? Is this something to just check off our calendar? Is this something that we come to do because we're supposed to do it? Or do we put something into it so that we can grow closer to the Lord as we listen to His Word and share in the Eucharist? As we hear the Gospel week in and week out and season in and season out, and the life that Jesus is calling us, and, you know, what it is to be a Christian. You know, we heard those Gospels from, the, uh, from the, the Sermon on the Mount before Lent started, challenging us to grow as disciples. Are we growing as disciples? Are we taking to heart the teachings of Jesus that we hear, growing in awareness, growing in spiritual sight? Or are we like the Pharisees who think we have it all figured out? And we pick and choose. We do the stuff we like and we ignore the stuff we don't. Jesus didn't really mean that stuff we don't like. Which way are we going? Toward the light, toward the darkness? As I've said before throughout this season, you know, Lent is really a time for us to do a lot of introspection and self-evaluation for how we're doing in terms of living out our faith. And while we have to be doing it all the time, Lent is a special season for us to focus, to find some growth, to be moving in the right direction, to be able to see more clearly with the eyes of faith. In other words, to be able to see as God sees you know, Samuel, the man of God, who is set apart really from the time that he is conceived. And throughout his life, Samuel is growing in the wisdom of God. And in due course, God will call Samuel to go and anoint David as we hear in the reading today. And in order for Samuel to be able to fulfill what the Lord is asking him to do, to anoint the one who will be king, Samuel has to see as God sees. And we know that he does. We are called to be able to grow to see as God sees. That's what it is to see with the eyes of faith, to get beyond a mere human understanding, to get beyond human considerations. Lent is a time for us to be able to grow in that direction, to take to heart what it is that we are called to do and the lives that we're called to lead. And if we are truly encountering the Lord, if we take seriously the vows of our baptism, we recognize all of the opportunities that we have to be in the presence of the Lord, to be open to and receive His grace. This gathering as we come here together is not just merely an obligation, but an awesome opportunity to encounter the grace of the One who gives us the light. We celebrate on this Laetare Sunday. We rejoice that we have been called from being darkness to being light in the Lord. As we journey this Lent toward Easter and as we continue our journeys of faith, may we continue to answer the call of the Lord to be open to His grace and to allow that grace to work in us, moving us toward the light to be able to see as God sees, that we can truly be children of light, children of God.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the presence of God, whose light shines on us in Christ, let us intercede now for the needs of all. The response is, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, in his 10th year as Pope, may he always stand before the world as a beacon of righteousness and hope in the face of sin and despair. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. For our elected officials, may they be just and merciful to the lowly and the poor, never forgetting the most needy and vulnerable among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. For the people of our nation and the world, may we be protected from war or political oppression, especially in Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the increase of vocations into the priesthood, diaconate, or vowed religious life, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead, especially Mary Jo Caruso, may inherit the just reward of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. During this Mass, we remember in a particular way, Carla McWilliams, Lord, in your mercy. For the prayers we hold deep in our hearts, which we now pause to add. God our Father, your word Jesus Christ spoke of peace to a sinful world and brought us the gift of reconciliation by the suffering and death he endured. Teach us, the people who bear his name, to follow the example he gave us. May our faith, hope, and charity turn hatred to love, conflict to peace, death to eternal life, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
open my eyes, Lord. Help me to see. my brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> it is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, He has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Cyril of Jerusalem, St. Regis, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Larry, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Together let us now pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join in singing our communion hymn, number 856, I Has Not Seen, number 856. Where saints have trod, 
Yet ever new the music rings to Jesus' living song of God. I has not seen, ear has not heard, what God has ready for those who love Him. Spirit of love, come give us the mind of Jesus. Teach us the wisdom of Let us pray. O God, who enlightens everyone who comes into the world, illumine our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. We had another good week in our diocesan Lenten appeal. As of uh, Tuesday morning, we were nearly halfway to our parish goal, about 47% of our parish goal. And right now, we've heard from about 15% of the parish. Uh, so to everybody who has made a pledge or gift, thank you very much. Uh, we're pretty much on par, pretty close to where we were last year. Um, so if you have not yet made a pledge or gift, I'd ask you to prayerfully consider doing so in the coming days. We're going to keep our momentum going, get to that diocesan target, uh, and then everything else uh, comes back to us, remember, assessment-free. So please help us uh, continue to do that. And i got to get my notes so I don't forget what else. Um, yes, read this week, um, regional penance services begin. Uh, we have two penance services this week, Wednesday night at St. John's in Delmont and Thursday night at Sacred Heart in Jeanette. Uh, in addition, of course, there will also be confessions on Saturday. And then we have more penance services um, than the following week. Our penance service here at St. Regis is on Tuesday the 28th. The, the, um, all the penance services schedule um, is in the bulletin today, so please check that out um, as we start to get closer to Easter. Uh, and this coming Monday night at 6.30, we'll have another festival planning meeting. Uh, we got the festival 
uh, planning off and running uh, last month. Um, we started to make some plans, so we want to keep that momentum going as well. Um, so uh, for those who are uh, helping out, uh, you know, who helped out last year, obviously, um, but all newcomers are welcome as well uh, so that we can make our festival even bigger and better this year. The Lord be with you. With your Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Our closing hymn is number 768, Take Up Your Cross, number 768. Oh.